Hello nerds and welcome to 4 Minute First where we give you a fast first impression of a new number one issue in 4 minutes or less. This week we're taking a look at a Titan Comics offering that has some deep, deep nerdy roots, Robotech number one. The Robotech anime series that found its way to US soil in 1985 was actually a conglomeration of three different anime. The Super Dimension Fortress Macross from 1982, Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross from 1984, and Genesis Climber Mospadia from 1983. And each of these Japanese shows were strung together into generations for US television syndication. And it's the first such generation that Robotech No. 1 adapts with a few minor changes. The Macross Saga, as it was called in U.S. syndication, is where it all begins, so that's an appropriate place to start. An alien ship crash lands on Earth, the military spends 10 years reverse engineering the tech and rebuilding the craft, and just as they begin the launch ceremony, aliens attack. And so begins the first human-alien war with a race of creatures called the Zentradi. And helming the narrative of this adaptation is Brian Wood, a favorite of ours at Nerds on Earth because he's responsible for the fantastic comic DMZ, and the pacing that he sets very closely matches that of the anime. Now, the crash is depicted in a single page. The ten years are skipped entirely with a few pieces of dialogue explaining the tech advances made, and then boom, aliens. And the first transformation of a plane into a mech takes place at the end of the issue, just as it did at the end of the first episode of the anime. I dig this approach, too, because readers will discover the capabilities of the crafts right along with the pilot, granting both some surprise as the fight evolves. Wood also does a great job of letting the art speak for itself at times, in many places completely cutting dialogue from the source material in order to do so. Now, the characters do suffer a bit in this first issue, though, with only one or two receiving any kind of development and not all of it was great, but it's a first issue. The fast pace that he set to get the stories ball rolling quickly inside of 30 pages meant that the character's development took the back seat. Give Wood some time to work on it and he'll get there, I promise. Now let's talk about art. Artist Marco Torini and colorist Marco Lesko combined to produce pages that clearly pay some homage to the Japanese source material but add some western edge, I guess you'd call it. There are a lot of lines and textures that didn't exist in the cartoon, particularly on the characters themselves, but the two still manage to keep everything and everyone immediately recognizable to those familiar with the source. So whether or not you're familiar with the anime or the manga, Robotech number one is a great buy. For those who are familiar, it hits all the right notes in all the right ways. This isn't a Michael Bay reinterpretation or reimagining. It's super, super faithful, and you will love it for all the same reasons that you loved the show 30 years ago. For those who aren't familiar, this is a great jumping on point, possibly even in a medium that you're more comfortable with. It's a fantastic way to find out what all the Robotech hype is about, and you may be jumping on the mech train a little late, but it's better late than never. Now, don't forget to give us a like down below and consider subscribing if you're a new viewer as well. And head on over to nerdsonearth.com for even more content on comics and movies and television, role-playing games, and more. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook to join the conversations that break out on those social medias through tweet threads and comments. And if you like what we're putting down, tell your friends. Lastly, I'd like to remind you of our podcasts, The Drift is all about the Starfinder RPG from Paizo, and we are getting ready to expand into some comic-heavy content real soon, so stay tuned. Later, nerds.